Well, I think the idea, the idea was not my brainchild. I went, once I recognized that I was dealing with veterans that were coming into the criminal court system, I went to look to see when I found that we weren't handling it here locally or within our state much differently than what we were doing here locally. I went to look outside and I found Robert Russell, a judge in Buffalo in New York. And he had um, started to see the same thing. He was a problem solving court judge, um, a drug court judge is the particular problem-solving program that he had worked with. He started seeing them come into his program, and um, he started to talk about it and write about it. And that's whenever I first got wind that there was this notion of there, there is a way that we can do something different for our service members, our military service members. And next, Mr. Reidinger. How are you, Mr. Reidinger? Okay, tell me, tell me how things are going. Um, I've had a few uh, small mishaps uh, since the last time I saw you. Uh, okay, so tell me, tell me this. Yes. Tell me this. In in this mishap, um, are you? Um, have you been as forthcoming? as open, putting everything out in the open air as you possibly could be? Yes and no. Uh, the main thing that Loretta spoke with me about was being more clear and more, just being more detailed on my past. Before I lost my temper or anything like that because someone said something to me and with, before I even said something back to him in the house, uh, it was from the elder board, I went to the staff and said, you know, I'm just coming to bring this up to you before it escalates and I get in trouble. And my exact words were, I'm coming to you before I cuss someone out or lose my temper. And the way it was kind of spun around, I guess is the best way to put it, Voss, um, was that once it got through like three or four people, it was Brian cussed out and lost his temper, but that was clarified that it was not that, that I did go to staff and it was, I was just bringing it to his attention before I got in trouble. And it was some of the stuff, the, the remarks that the, the elder board said through the door after they, they closed it on me and it just, it, it, it did make me a little angry and it would make anyone a little angry the way they did it. Um, and that's why before it escalated to anything, because in my past I'd have sit there and I mean, who knows, I'd have kicked the door in, I would have flipped out, cussed everyone running down the hallway like I've done in the past. Um, and I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, I had a very bad temper issue. Um, so it was actually commended by Loretta on the way it was handled this time um, in front of Gervasio. Okay, so, so that's, that's a step in the right direction. I got prescribed pain medicine um, when I was in the military and that progressively got more and more and more as, you know, time went on. They kept, I kept going on deployments. Um, and they would just give you prescriptions. Um, when I got out, there was a time period where I had a, a lapse from when I was active duty to be in over at the VA hospital. And I ran out of pain medicine and I got really sick. Um, and I didn't know, I didn't know, I, I had no clue about drugs. And my neighbors, he's like, you know, you're, you're dope sick. Cause he knew the medicine I was taking. I'm like, no, there's no way. I don't get high, you know, I don't do that kind of stuff. And I blew him off for a few days and it just got worse and worse and worse. And finally he came over, he's like, dude, just, you know, if you snort this, you feel a million times better. And I did, and it was just like gone. I mean, I was puking, I was so, I, was, I couldn't get out of bed, I couldn't eat. Um, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't sleep, but I was stuck in bed. Um, so that really, that, that, that messed me up right there. Um, ultimately, I'm an alcoholic. I am a very, very bad alcoholic, and that was when I was in the military. So I've, I started coping in a bad way at an early age, um, and this started in high school. Really? Yeah. My drinking was, it was pretty heavy. Um, I mean, I got Bud Light tattooed on me to try to get free, free beer, 
you know, that's how bad of an alcoholic I was. Um, and the pills, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't function as an alcoholic. You know, it messed up my marriage. Um, but you give me pills, I'll do whatever you want. You know, I can go to work, I can do this. I, you know, it makes, it's like a superhero thing at first. But when it gets out of hand, then everything gets out of control. So that's, that's why it grabs people like that. There were some minor steps that, you know, I still have a lot of work to do, but I'm acknowledging it and I'm correcting it as it comes okay. and I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. And that's what we want to see. We want to see you keep working. I know that you've been on lockdown um, for a little while yes. for, for these behaviors that we're describing, right? A long while, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, probably you're trying to get out with that, with that escort to go to his <laughs> vet center appointment was because you wanted to get out and get some air yourself. Yeah, and I took my, I'm working on my four step right now also. Okay. Um, and it's, it's taking a toll on me, um, I guess my mood wise, because I'm, I'm looking at me and that's not always the funnest thing to do mm -hmm. and recognizing me and learning me. Um, it's, well, you're, no, you're, you're changed. You probably have some changed behavior there's, there's, that wasn't always there. I've had a lot of moments where I've been kind of to myself in my nutshell and I kind of get stuck in the four step and that's I guess the best way for me to explain it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why John Hale, well, sorry, I can't say that. That's why the other client um, said, you know, listen, I'll, you can come to the vet center, check it out. They have, a, you know, offer PTSD stuff, which, you know, now come, you know, after talking to Gervasio that I do need to just stick with talking to Scott Heisman, but it, it probably did have a lot to do with and it, not intentionally, as Loretta said, but, you know, there was other motives along with, you know, just going to the vet center and taking my step work with me because that's what I, you know, I did on the bus and stuff like that. You can rush through your steps. You can run around to this opportunity mm -hmm. for treatment, to that opportunity for treatment, and use it as a shield from really sitting down with your treatment provider mm -hmm. and digging in, okay? Right. And what we're going to encourage you to do is to slow down and to start digging in and taking one session at a time and setting some goals for that session with your treatment provider and then working through it. Even though that they're coming in here after having gotten into trouble with the law and having a lot of times fallen into a pretty bad spot in their personal lives. Um, so you see, you see that, but what you saw just before that was a service member who was at their very best. They were performing at their peak. They were uh, doing things, sacrificing, giving of themselves for their country um, that, and being asked to do it in, under conditions that were certainly uncomfortable to say the least. Um, so uh, it, it, they just, we're, we are the helping hand. We are that helping hand that sort of helps them bridge the gap between them being, having kind of fallen from grace, if you will, um, and coming back into the community, um, readjusting and reacquainting to civilian life in a healthy way. Okay. Okay. And that's the game plan. Is there anything that he's missed that, that I should know? Your Honor, just for clarification On the purposes. positive side, I know that you want to recommend a sanction, and I want to hear about that in a moment, but I think he has failed to mention a couple of positive things, mm -hmm. and I want to make yes. sure. And that's what I was going to say for clarification Thank purposes. You. He had a week where he did very well, and you didn't mention that. There was a week with no issues. There was a week we had court. And also, you did very well at... Then that week, you had reported an issue about another participant there. So I want to, we want to applaud you for that as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Didn't he have an injury yes, too? Yes, he has another um, where you had declined the use of uh, pain pills from yes. service, Thank right? You. Yes. Congratulations. Absolutely. Okay, so, so I'm very, I'm very moved by that, and I think the others should be able to bear witness to that. You had an option. You had an option to fall completely off. Okay. They, walked, they walked in with it in the cup. You had a yeah, choice so to go through you. and do some of the old behaviors that you were doing, but you chose something that's better for Brian Reidinger. Okay? So I think that deserves a round of applause from your comrades. So um, I commend you. 
Thank um, you, significantly Anna. for that. We've still got work to do. Yes. It's undoubted. You've got some, uh, go ahead and tell us about what's on the, what's the sanction that's being recommended. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'll get one more positive. Okay. So with the positive that you, what, that we just talked about, you are, the team is giving you an opportunity to, for a day pass. It'll be eight hours through the day that you can go spend time with your family. Thank you. And for the sanction, for the behavior that was mentioned, you are going to, the 15 days that was on hold, that is now activated. Okay. Okay. I kind of figured that. How okay. Much, that was, that's so here's, here's, the, here's the plan for your pass because I think you've earned it. Thank you. You've completely earned it. I w I'd like it to be at least eight hours so you can get a nice visit in, okay? Mm -hmm. um, be with your family and enjoy it. I want you to have a plan for how you're gonna cope with any issues that might arise mm -hmm. during that eight hour period because I don't um, want you to have an issue of where you use, okay? Yes, Your Honor. I wanna make sure that case management has seen that and reviewed that with you and I wanna make sure that they know where you're gonna be, yes, what your Honor. intentions are of how you're gonna spend that visit. Um, and then one, I'd like to hear an act, a kind of an action, after action review of absolutely. how it went. Absolutely. Okay. Um, one question I wanna clarify at the house for the, the single day passes, they offer a nine to nine pass, it's a green pass, and that's pretty much the limit. Would that be optional instead of just eight hour, that'd be 12, well, kind of like a le 10 and a half due to drive time. I'm fine um, with that. With my mom. And it's, it's gonna be with my mom and dad. My mom's sitting right there. Yes. So. And I'm glad she's here. And she has my telephone number as well. Yes, she does. And so the other thing, uh, the time that's on the, uh, on the shelf, if yes. you will, that we placed up there, I'm gonna take 10 off. Thank I'm you, I'm gonna take Honor. 10 down, and that's gonna be the extension because you came in here and you showed some forthrightness and you've had some baubles, but you've had some progress. Is there anything else that we should um, address with Mr. Reitinger? Your Honor, would you like to report some incidents on him? Yes, please. Okay. His urine analysis have been negative. That's really wonderful. I've made visits to Interlink. Um, his counselor gave him several, um, she gave him several incidents while we were meeting with him because she said that she has seen some improvement in his behavior. And he's here at court today. All right, so um, we've got him mentoring with who, Captain Ready Riley? All right, so you've got Fred and Cindy today, Mr. Reidinger. Come back after you're finished. I do like this program because it, it, it makes me have the structure that I need. It doesn't suggest a structure. It doesn't say, well, you can do it, but here's the door. You know, you can leave, you know. It, for me, now I can only speak for myself, but it was like I'm looking at this jail prison, well, prison time, or complete the program, you know, follow the structure. Obviously, I'm gonna do everything I can to follow this program. And for years, you know, I've just bounced out in and out of court and in and out of jail and in and out of treatments, you know, just to get over on something or somebody um, or to get out of a situation as fast as possible. And this one is actually making me sit down and I have no choice but to work on myself. And that's what I really needed to get to the point where I'm at today, um, where I have no desire to use. Um, I have no desires at all. The only thing that is, I'm struggling with now is my behavior. And that's a good thing about this court because even though I'm passing my urinalysis, you know, it's a behavior treatment court. So now once we get that under control where you're not using, 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 now we can focus on me. And that's what they're, they're hammering me on now, which, you know, it's, it's positive stages. It's stressful at times, you know, it, it's hard. It, it's mentally, it'll mentally break you down. But if you can be strong enough to get past it, then, you know, the outcome is ultimately the best possible. They are not looking to be anybody's hero. They are, they're the, they are that um, citizen who would help that stranded vehicle and change the tire, feed the baby, do whatever had to be done in that instance, and you would never know that they were a veteran, and then there they would be gone. And they might be going, uh, not knowing where they're gonna be eating that night, or not having a place to go home to, but she would never know it. Um, so it's, it's that level of um, uh, strength that I find, even whenever they are dealing with issues, that is in each one of our participants.
What about Mr. Reidinger? Well, I will well, tell I was, you, his, his mom did not look thrilled about him going did. anywhere. There was no kind of happiness. There was no smile. There was nothing. I think there's one part I think Teresa said, he'll be going home with mom. Or he said, somebody said he that. Did. And he did. And she went. She had her poker yeah. face on. It was, I mean, it was. Very much so. Well, but I, did you see the, the interaction between him and her? He turned mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. as soon as that got said mm -hmm. and looked right at her. And she went. Okay. Like that. So I, I took that as she sanctioned it. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't usually no. give you a whole lot of feedback. She doesn't. But I, I took that as she was letting him know it was okay. Mm -hmm. I've had multiple But maybe to be on his best her. behavior. Oh, right, yeah. right. So keep that I'm watching you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing that. I think she's yeah. scared. I, I, so I, I mean, do too. I have had multiple times with her. She won't go looking through his uh, information or his paperwork for a DD214 or any of his stuff because she's afraid of syringes. I mean, she doesn't want to involve herself. And I think she's been duped a bunch of times by him and is just, he's ran her out of steam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that that's all true, but she's, I mean, we're trying to work on a new day here, mm -hmm. and I think she sees that, because she's been here to bear witness to yeah. the things and the accountability we're trying to hold him to. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm that hopeful she, that that was a sanction of, yes, I'm acknowledging that we're gonna try this out. Yeah. She's, you know, she's so. one of the active family members that we have. I mean, she yeah. comes frequently. Yeah. I noticed about her. Well, I thought his response to the 15 days was positive. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he, you know, showed body language mm -hmm. like he normally does when he gets san sanctioned. So he was prepared. And he was transparent. He was, he was very, he was. I, transparent. usually I have to go back and clarify what he said, but this mm -hmm. time I didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, I think everyone here today, uh, from my point of view, seemed pretty respectful, which I thought was important, and, and pretty willing to hear the constructive criticism without getting defensive. So mm -hmm. I, I thought as, as a whole, that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was um, um, a medic, a combat medic. He was in his second tour in Iraq. Um, he was uh, in a, what we thought was a safer operation, um, and his first tour he was on the ground. Um, and his second tour he was in an air ambulance unit. And um, August the 8th um, was the day that um, he was doing a day to night transition training, a routine type of um, exercise that they do. He was getting training hours. We knew he was going to be doing it. And the plane, uh, the, the Black Hawk, it crashed um, into a lake in Iraq. So that was, you know, uh, completely unfathomable, something we would have never um, expected, um, even though we were prepared that something could happen because we knew that he was in a very dangerous place. But you're never really prepared. But you're never really prepared. And you're, you're never prepared for a loss of a young life and I think that's um, another thing that, that's part of what inspires me is that these lives, you know, we can never get Stephen back, but these lives can be strengthened. Um, they can learn how to cope with the struggles and the experiences that they've had, and they can go forward and they can do something great in this world. Um, they're young and they're strong and they, they know duty and honor. <laughs>